Hello everybody. Well, today is a full moon in Taurus. I'm a Taurian, so you can imagine there's quite a bit of flack around. <laughs> Lots of tears. Not much laughter at the moment. Um, I just wanted to talk about tears really because I just think they're not valued enough. I mean, when someone's crying, people tend to want to run away, look away, feel uncomfortable, comfort them, don't have these tears, you know, they're going to be a nuisance. And of course, tears mean many things. They can mean happiness, joy, sadness, um, and uh, men cry, but men are afraid to cry. And that's such a shame because tears are very releasing. Tears are good to have because they release the chemicals within our body that are caused by stress. So people that cry are often a little bit more happier than those that don't because they can let go of their emotions and can they feel them and let go of them. And I just feel it's so sad that people don't acknowledge tears enough. You know, when I was a little girl, I was not allowed to cry, hence my depressions nowadays. You know, depression is sadness gone inwards. And my mother used to say, oh, be happy for me. Don't have tears, you know, don't be upset, don't this, don't that. And I think it's really important that we express our feelings, not only to ourselves, but to others. I mean, okay, don't go weeping all over the place because people don't like too much of it. As I have noticed, you have to sort of keep some sort of boundaries. But I, I can remember only only a few months ago, actually, or maybe years, I can't remember, when I was working with the spiritual master. And I was actually very upset because I had every reason to be upset about something. And he just sat there and just waved his hand away, send somebody else in to sort this woman out. This is a shame. I think even on the hierarchy, with the, some of the spiritual martyrs, they're very, very male. They've probably been up there for a very long time when women were very repressed and they hadn't yet learned how to accept femininity. And we're in the age now, aren't we, of you know reawakening the divine feminine. And women do cry, women do have emotions. And men think you're being hysterical or whatever. It's very real, you know, to have a cry. I love a cry. <laughs> A bit indulgent maybe, but I think, you know, tears are part of us, aren't they? And I'm on my own, I have no one to talk to or, or express myself with, so when I have a good cry, it's kind of acknowledging me, my my, my feelings and myself, part of me. I, I, quite, I find it quite indulgent sometimes to have a good cry, let it all go, you know. Um, and I think it's very important, and I think for me, most of my life, I've had to say, repress emotions, but also not received a lot of love. I know you probably laugh at that, and this is not a sob story. A lot of us haven't. And this new age thing, be joyful, be happy, be love yourself, I find it very, very difficult. And that makes me angry. <laughs> it doesn't take much. But, you know, this self-love business, I've never come to terms with it. I don't quite know what it means. I suppose you look in the mirror, you think, what a silly old fool, you know, I don't like it because I'm getting older and getting more wrinkly and all the stuff and I find it very hard to love that. I find it for old age is very, very difficult to come to terms with. But also, you know, being told to love ourselves. Why? I mean, we don't know ourselves enough to love ourselves. I mean, it's much easier, I think, to love somebody else. But that's wrong because that's supposed to be, you know, um, it's not... It's conditional, isn't it? We love somebody else. Very, there's very few of us can love unconditionally. So this self-love business, self-liking maybe would be a bit easier, but self-love is pushing it a bit, I think. <laughs> so it's having that sort of mood today, you know, this full moon in Taurus. We have so many planetary energies at the moment that are causing us to, well, it's for Taurians and Scorpios of course but any anybody at the moment is a real push to get us to let go of things to release things and yeah you mustn't cry about it oh no you mustn't get depressed look at all the internet people oh, laugh and be happy be joyful you know sorry can't do that not at the moment I feel very depressed I'm actually very depressed not not today I'm out of it a bit but I do get very depressed and I I deal with it you know I just go to bed put the duvet over my head and just cry myself to sleep and then in a few hours later I come out of it and it's really only energy isn't it energy that we're being asked to let go of and you can't let go of it and you're laughing <laughs> oh dear but 
this love business it's a word it's banded around we've got christmas coming up and there's love from christmas cards when the man next door to the milkman love from it's it don't mean it it's not it's not real love love means something much more powerful than that and it's it's unconditional and it's not something you put on a christmas card for this man next door well i don't but then people this love thing is so easily written so easily said and it really people don't know what it really means it's it's very very hard to feel <laughs> gosh <laughs> I haven't got my glasses on today, so I don't really know how I look. I got fed up with myself this morning, looking at myself in the mirror. I thought, oh, God, where's that beautiful young woman gone? So I took my glasses off, <laughs> hoping it would go away. Of course, it won't. But I'll tell you a little story, because for me, this lack of love, I was told, and I think it was 2002, uh, it was like another psychic message, um, that I'd never received really much love at all, and I would die because of it. Well, that was rather a dramatic thing to tell somebody, I thought. I don't know how true it was. Well, I'm still here, obviously, but I, was, I, I met a man just after that whom I thought I loved, but it was a soulmate, so it was a very ancient love, and I did love him but I wasn't in love with him and I think he loved me but he wasn't in love he wanted excitement and young girls and he was 72 at the time and he never had a life like that so he was off he was off with the girls you know but um it was a, it was a it was a love but it wasn't it wasn't a very reassuring kind of love it was conditional anyway um a nice little story I will tell you was about my dad, um, who's not alive now. Um, when I was living in a place called Newark, was I living? No, I was in Bristol. I've moved around so many times, I forget where I am. Anyway, um, I was living in Bristol at the time. I've lived there all my life, although I'm not from the West Country. I'm in North, Northern Yorkshire area. But anyway, I was in Bristol most of my life, West Country. And um, I just had the feeling to come back to Roots in, in Newark, Nottinghamshire, um, to a very isolated home. I think I've told you about the, ha the haunted house. I won't go into that now. Um, so I moved up here on my own. I don't know how I did that. I didn't know anybody up here. There was no reason except I just felt I had to get back to Roots um, to I re reconnect with something I don't know. It probably wasn't a good idea because I've been so unhappy ever since. I don't like it up here. I rather I, I don't like when well, I'm in Lincolnshire. I don't like it. It's too flat, too boring and I'm too outgoing i'm part canadian my mother was canadian anyway this story i was going to tell you i um i was in a was a semi yeah, semi detached house quite full of stuff as you can imagine and i didn't want to drive up on what i hadn't a friend was going to bring the car up i was going to get the train I, why i did i don't know why i did that i just thought i couldn't drive that distance on my own with all the stuff you know and i needed a van obviously so my dad offered to, to, to see me off so he stayed in the house did he stay in the house i can't remember what happened oh that's right he stayed behind to to get all the stuff you know packed in the van and and he must have been distraught mum didn't come she hadn't got the courage but my dad sweet old dad was my support and my favorite person and very very loving and kind and it must have broken his heart to see me leave but anyway um i got to the state he took me to the station i think he he must have he took me to the station, that's right, and I got on the train and I, I can remember, in fact I feel quite cheerful now thinking about it, this is real love, and I can remember sitting on the train with the window to my left and he's standing there, he must have been in his 70s then I guess, and he put his hand on the screen, on the window, and I suddenly, I just felt such a lot of love from him. Now, he wasn't a man to express feelings. A lot of men aren't, and particularly that generation. They're very repressed emotionally. And through that hand, I felt it went straight, straight through my solar plexus. And I sobbed and I sobbed. And a woman <laughs> sitting up opposite said, you all right? I said, yes, I'm leaving home. <laughs> <laughs> and that was really the last time I had that connection with my dad, although I did see him once or twice. He died not long after that. That's another story. But I, that, I suppose, was the first time that I really felt the love from my father. Um, 
I can't say I didn't have it from mother. That, that's another story, difficult relationship. But my father was my my mentor, really, I suppose, and my well, little girls and their daddies, you know. Well, not all little girls and their daddies, my... Anyway, um, so this was real love that I felt, and, and I've had moments like that, very strange moments, not not long-lasting ever, and perhaps it only comes in short bursts, perhaps it's so powerful that's all we can deal with. I mean, this man friend that I had, who was, that's another story, you want to read the book? <laughs> I can I can see him standing in the driveway with his hands in his pockets and I was walking towards him and again I suddenly felt this it, a surge of love come towards me and then it was cut off. It lasted a few seconds, if, if that. But I, these are the things that you can remember, aren't they? I mean, it doesn't die, you know. I think it was Jesus the Master said, all that is real cannot be threatened, all that is unreal does not exist and love is real and it goes on and of course we have people in spirit that can send us love and I had the most beautiful experience last night this full moon I took lots of lots of loving light coming towards me and I just cried and of course again the crying you know it wasn't a crying out of sadness or unhappiness or loss or grief it was just because this love was coming in at me and with the third eye when that gets triggered it does bring tears so all this stuff about don't cry don't be upset don't this don't that I, we've got to forget it I mean this the sentient time we're going through is about receiving love and it's going to bring up a lot of feelings that need coming out and we're going to cry about them so let somebody have an internet thing well of course I, <laughs> you know what i mean a proper person <laughs> who does channeling and all this stuff let somebody have yes it's okay to cry you know let's tell the world let's tell the hierarchy these males that think women shouldn't be crying you know they mustn't have feelings let's shut them up let's dismiss them they're not all like that but one or two are very very ancient in their belief systems do you know do you know this is interesting that in the bible i only found it recently that it, women apparently uh, it was advised this is the old testament of course that women shouldn't have hair long or they should have it covered up because men are nearer to god because they haven't got long hair now can you believe it i wish i could find it again and i could quote it but this is a, the feminine i'm on now i'm on a different track so i better go <laughs> my, my favorite subject you know Femininity, it's, it's a male's world and all that. I've had to fight very hard. In fact, someone told me the other day, I'm probably androgynous. I'm probably more of a man than a woman. <laughs> Living on my own for 30 years, I've learned most things and I can fight a good battle, I can tell you. So anyway, on that note, have a good cry and enjoy it. Take care of yourselves. God bless. Bye-bye.